I'm Peter and I teach mindfulness in three dimensions. I teach the Alexander Technique. I said in my last video that people frequently try to make sense of the Alexander work in terms of what they already know. Early in my Alexander career, 20 odd years ago, two body workers came to me and, and I demonstrated the Alexander Technique to them. Uh, the body workers who ironically were in pain. And the first one, when I showed her how effortless she could be, said, that can't be right. It, it shouldn't have worked. You must have pressed an acupressure point. And the second one said, well, yes, it's effortless, but it's not right. I'll show you what right is. You have to pull your neck back, lift your chest and tip yourself back on your heels. That's right. I remember this because in recent months I've had three people come to me for introductory sessions who will not come back for a second session. Now, I'm not being judgmental here. I feel sorry that I didn't manage to get, across, get it across to them in a, in a better way. And most people come to me for back pain or because they want to improve their posture. And they tend to be amazed by the lightness, freedom and expanded consciousness, the, the, the 3D mindfulness that they get from it. And each of these three came to me because they were in pain and each of them left pain free. I don't treat pain. Our aches, pains and problems are mainly caused by how we do things, um, by our habitual way of, ways of doing things. So I showed them how they could go about their lives in a way that didn't cause pain by choosing to do things in a non-habitual way. They would have to learn to apply this, of course. The first one said that the difference was remarkable, but he wouldn't come back because he didn't know how he would learn it. The second agreed, yes, it would be good to be that free from pain, but he didn't know how it fitted in with what he already believed. And the third, pain-free, said he wouldn't come back because he didn't understand how it works. Now, what's going on here? These people, unfortunately, are so keen to stay in their mental comfort zones, so frightened of stepping out of their comfort zones that they would rather stay physically uncomfortable to the point where they're in pain. Ironically, I don't ask people to step out of their comfort zones. I show people that their comfort zones are bigger than they thought. I saw a Venn diagram online. It was a small circle comfort zone. And here, it said, where the magic happens. For me, the best thing about learning the Alexander Technique and exploring how it applies to my life is not the physical benefits, but the expansion, the expanding of my comfort zone. It's not losing the physical habits, it's the changing, it's changing the mental habits that imprisoned me, that lessened my choices. I've learned that emotions that I felt were negative, anger or fear, are just emotions. I can feel angry and not have to do anything about it. Before Alexander, I was so terrified of dental pain, I didn't go to the dentist for seven years. Post-Alexander, I had to have a bone marrow biopsy. People scream. I went, I was terrified, but mostly I was intrigued by how painful it could possibly be. Before Alexander, I was too shy to look people in the eye. When I had to do a talk to 20 people I knew, I shook for a week. Post-Alexander, I get up on stage at the uh, conferences of the international organization and I MC the talent shows. My posture is improved too, and I move in a lighter and more comfortable way. But those are insignificant compared to the other benefits. Some people can't look at themselves in the mirror. Sometimes the magic is as simple as being able to look at their reflection without judging. For those people who won't come back, sadly, the magic can be as simple as not having to spend the rest of your life in pain. Sometimes the change can be as big as a paradigm shift. I wrote in my book that people over time find that they can either drop their habits or choose not to indulge them. Long-standing, deep-seated habits like always hurrying or regularly being late, being nervous or apologizing all the time, habits of friendships and relationships. The Dalai Lama says we remake our karma every day. Alexander students gradually find that they can choose not to let their unhappy childhood affect them. They begin to feel good about themselves, whatever body shape they inherited. They drop the things they felt were part of their DNA, like 
I can't dance. I need to act like I'm important. I couldn't possibly do a talk to the whole team. I'm not a leader. Someone I used to teach said, I thought I was born grumpy, as he became happier. The Alexander Technique, three-dimensional mindfulness, is about freedom and change, real lasting change. One of the better books on the technique is called Freedom to Change. The bigger your comfort zone, the more choices you have, and the more choices you have, the more freedom you've got. Come and try it. Learn to liberate yourself from your habits. Your posture will improve too. <laughs>